Okay, so this is a supplementary lesson made for grade 9 science, academic science, Stratford Northwestern, on scientific notation. A little bit of why we use it and what it means exactly. Essentially, in words, it's a method of representing very large or very small numbers in a way that's easy to, um, easier to read, understand, and to use in your calculator. And it's particularly relevant uh, right now dealing with electricity because you know, you might be dealing with a number such as uh, the mass mass of an electron, for example. If I was going to write down the mass of an electron, I would keep doing zeros until I hit 30. So that's the mass of an electron. And from my point of view, that's really not useful. Now, mind you, those are all zeros. So it's um, one, de one zero before the decimal place and then 30 afterwards, 911. And in scientific notation, what that is is 9.11 times 10, it's a 10, to the negative 31 kilograms. That's the mass of an electron. So when I think of the mass of an electron, I think of the scientific notation. I don't think of uh, this huge 30 zeros. Uh, similarly, uh, certainly in physics class, we deal with things like the mass of the Earth or the mass of the Sun when we talk about gravity. And the mass of the Sun um, was negative 31. And this would be a big, big number compared to the mass of an electron. And I'm not going to, whoopsie, I'm not going to write it out as a, regular notation, but I will say the mass of the sun is 1.99 times 10 to the 30, positive 30 kilograms. So just a thing to make note of is just 30 or positive 30 implied by no, no sign at all as a positive. So the reason why we use scientific notation then is to clearly represent either big, big numbers like the mass of the sun or small, small numbers. And what can happen uh, for lots of good reasons that you know, you'll learn later on in your, in your high school career and certainly in university is a lot of um, a lot of times even not so big and not so small numbers we use scientific notation instead of regular notation. Um, for example, you know it could happen. Certainly, I know in the grade twelve physics textbook you might see a number that looks like you know two point three times ten to the negative two. Well, that's only really zero point zero zero two three. You might say, well, how come I can't? Uh, how come I can't write that out in regular notation? And the reason is just some textbooks use that all the time. That was actually a mistake. It should be just 0, 2, 3. But anyway, uh, the point is that you might say, why can't I just write that number out as uh, instead of this number? It's easier. And the answer is no good answer as far as I'm concerned. But I do know that some textbooks do that, so it's good that you learn it. And certain universities, certain professors might request it. So learning scientific notation has um, different relevances. Um, for us, it might come up time and again, uh, periodically. And then what I really want is for that you, that you know it when you see it in future coursework. So let's go through the lesson on how to take a number that's in regular notation and turn it into scientific notation with big numbers. And I'm going to make my big number not so big, just so it doesn't take forever to write it out. But say I want to write the number um, 11,000 in scientific notation. Okay? Well, here's, here's basically what you do. Here's the rules. Uh, the first thing you do is you write one number, first digit before the decimal place, second digit after decimal. So the first step then will look like this, 1.1. 1 .1. So that's how it's going to start. And I did mention earlier that I'm doing a very general case with only what we call two significant digits. Um, it's a good start for now. So like I say, first thing we have is 1.1, because I've written one number before, one number after. This is not the whole formation. Uh, the next thing we is the second step is add times 10 to. <laughs> that's always the case. So now I've got 1.1 1 
times 10. And then the question becomes, the hardest part of the whole thing becomes, well, what's the exponent? And the exponent is going to be exponent will be, I'm going to write the number out again. There's the number. The total number of digits that would be on the left of the decimal place in this case, there is no digits on the right of the decimal place. Um, but the total number of digits, subtract 1. I'm going to say whole digits, so that means we're not including numbers. If for some reason this had numbers on the right, like 11,000.25 or something, those the 2.25 wouldn't count. So... Therefore, our final answer is, by the way, just count those up. There's one, two, three, four, five digits. That must mean my final answer is going to be times 10 to the 4. So just writing out our final answer then, you can know, say, you know, therefore, 11,000 equals 1.1 1 .1 times 10 to the 4. Okay, so first step, one number before, one after. Second step, you add times 10 to, and third step, the exponent is going to be the total number of whole digits, subtract 1. So let's just do another example. Um, example 2, let's do, um, I don't know, 240,000. So, first step, one number before, one after, 2.4. Second step, add times 10. Third step, count the number, the exponent is count the number of digits and subtract 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the exponent is going to be 5. Okay, one last example, just just overkill it. Uh, example 3, let's say 120. We'll take a smaller number. And again, why would you write that in scientific notation? No good reason that I can think of, but you might. The point is that the rules still stay the same. One number before, one number after, times 10, total number of digits, subtract 1. 1, 2, 3, subtract 1 is 2. Okay? That's scientific notation. And by the way, a smaller number is kind of a good way to look at it too because you realize that it is just a mathematically correct statement. Um, 1.2 times 10 squared is 100. Right? So you work that out in your calculator or in your head. 1.2 times 100 is 120. So... Obviously, it is a mathematically correct statement. Um, why would I lie to you? Okay, so next we're going to do uh, small numbers, and they're a slightly different rule. Okay, so small numbers. And I showed you already with the mass of an electron, have one difference right off the top, and that difference is that you have a negative exponent. And that be is because something you learn later on in, in science class, or sorry, math class, is that a negative exponent is like kind of like dividing. So you're making it smaller by dividing. Uh, for now, don't worry too much about that part because you just haven't learned the math skills yet. Just learn the rules and make sure you can understand and go back and forth between the different numbers. So if I was going to do, um, let's do 0.00. .00 Three, five. And again, you might notice today that everything I've done has you know, a bunch of zeros and two non-zero digits. And clearly that's not how life actually is, but for today's lesson and getting an understanding of scientific notation, that's where we're starting. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, same as with large numbers, is one, des one number before the decimal, one number after. Okay, and the numbers don't change order or anything like that, so that would look like a 3.5. Okay. Uh, similarly, step number two is 0035 times 10 to. So that means that we've got uh, 3.5 times 10. Now, step three, the exponent.
I better go back and just look at me. So the number is, just going to write it off in the corner here, 0 0.0035. So for the exponent, it's going to be negative. Uh, so it's going to be 3.5 times 10. Make it negative. It's a small number. And again, the small number really represents dividing. Or the negative number, sorry, means dividing. And this time, the exponent is basically the total number of zeros. 1, 2, 3 to the negative 3. Okay? So that's one example of a small number scientific notation. Let's do another example. Uh, let's say... Let's do 0 0.000061. Again, I'm sticking with the same theme of just two of two non-zero numbers, which is just one case. So first step, 6.1 times 10. And the negative. Now count the total number of total number of zeros. One, two, three. 4, 5. So it's the negative 5. Uh, let's do something just a touch different. Let's try going against my standard for the day. Okay, so if I was going to do 0 0.04, so there goes my whole setup I've given you, right? I have one number before, one after. Well, something you probably know is that really 0 0.04 really is the same as saying 0 0.0, oopsie, 0 0.04, 0. So I kind of do have two numbers I can work with. So then when I write out my scientific notation, same thing, I go 4.0, and times 10, and ex negative exponent, and I have two zeros in total. Interesting thing to keep in mind, I don't count this zero. Don't count that one. Just count the two here before the first non-zero digit. So that's important. Uh, and so I got two zeros, so it's going to be to the negative two. Let's do one more like uh, 0 0.00006. Okay. And I'm just going to, on my own because I want to add another zero right there just to remember. So when I write out my answer, it's equal to 6.0 times 10. I'm only counting these zeros over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, and it's negative for sure. And that's it. That's scientific notation. So make sure you have a decent idea of how to do questions like this because uh, you will be quizzed on it.